This is the recording for the week three assignment called Your First Design. Now I explained this thoroughly in the le weekly lesson recording, but I thought I'd make a separate standalone recording so you don't have to go to the lesson recording to, to uh, learn more about this. So it's the Your First Design, so I'm going to scroll down and go to the assignment, Your First Design. Now Your First Design assignment is the basis for this course for you. And in this, you're going to use your imagination and start the beginning design of an ultimate game, the ultimate game that you might want to see develop sometime. Now, we're not going to develop in the class. I've already talked to develop it in the class. I've talked about that before because it would take you know, a year or two to develop games, to design and everything. But this would be like if you're working for EA Sports or Nintendo or somebody like that on their design team, and your job is to brainstorm what a game might be. And you're just going to write out the information. So if I look at this, it's 100-point assignments. So that means it's one-tenth of your grades. So, that, so obviously it's going to be a big assignment. And we've learned in the first two units, in creating con or in the um, the overview unit and elements unit, we've learned about different game elements, and these are some of the game elements we've learned about. So if you need to refresh your memory on what these things are, then you need to go to the uh, game elements unit and the course overview unit to uh, recall what these things are. But in this assignment, you're going to you have a a game designed in your mind. And in this game, you're going to, the game's going to have a story or a plot. The game's going to have some characters. The game's going to have challenges and strategies. The game will have rules, instructions, levels of play. So as you work on this, each of these six items will be a separate section. So if you're doing this in PowerPoint, each of these would be its own slide. Characters might end up being two slides. Who knows? Each of these will be an individual slide. Now, if you're doing this in a word processing program, then each of these would be in their own section. And when you may put them in their own section, then you need to differentiate what is what. So what I would suggest is that the word story, that ends up being a side heading on your paper, maybe in size 20. And then you hit enter, and as you type your story, that's going to be size 12. So this is going to be in the word processor if you do it that way. Same with characters. That's going to be its own big side heading. Or you could you know, type the word story on the side and then put an underline under it so that it stands out. But I want to be able to go from section to section in your paper and see that I'm actually, I want to clearly be able to see that the sections are different. Now in a PowerPoint, if these are all six individual slides, then obviously it's much easier to do. Now also in a PowerPoint, let's talk about that. Actually in both of these, you're going to answer all of these questions. So in a PowerPoint, you would have probably one slide towards the end that would answer all six of these questions. In a word processing program, you'd have all these questions down towards the end, and you'd answer all six of these questions. And you'd have the questions written out, and then the answer clearly at the end of this, so I know what question you are answering. So if we think about a PowerPoint, a PowerPoint, you'd have your title slide, whatever the title of your game is, and maybe some kind of a picture you find. Then you'd have at least six slides here. So that's six slides. Your title slide would be seven slides. Then in a PowerPoint, you would have, or Prezi, or whatever you're going to do this in a presentation if you want to. This would be another slide. So you'd end up with six, seven for your title slide, eight for this. So you would end up with at least eight slides of text information. And in both of these, you end up having to put images in, images you sketch yourself. So I'm going to go to the directions. So here are the directions. So if you take a look at this, these are all the same as we just looked at. But if we move down below, two ways to do it. Narrative format, meaning in a word processor. So I've told you how you're going to have the different sections for that. And you need to have some pictorial representations of your game. So if I was doing a race car game, I might have a sketch of what the track would look like like from above, if we were in a blimp flying above the, the racetrack, I could see the, the um, surface of the racetrack. 
that might be an image. I might have an image of a sketch of one of the cars that are part of it, and I might have a sketch of one of the characters. Just two or three sketches. And you don't have to be perfect art, but they do need to be sketches. Because when people design games or programs or something, they pull out a piece of paper and a pencil, and they start just sketching, start drawing. They don't go and find a, a, a image program and start designing a graphic off the bat. So there's going to be sketches that you're going to draw. Then on choice B, this is if you're going to do a slide presentation with PowerPoint or Prezi or something. And again, I've talked about the different slides you would have, and then you'd probably then you'd end up with images sketched by you, and those images can be on their own slide. Or like if you're on the characters slide, you could put if you draw a picture of one of your images or one of your characters, you could put that on the character slide along with the text information. So again, you're going to have two or three sketched images on your presentation or on the paper that you turn in. Now, how can you get those sketched images to your document? Well, there are a number of ways, and a few of you have done things like this before. first one that most of you have done is with your camera. So if you draw your sketch out on a piece of paper, then you take your camera, take a picture of it, then you can send it to yourself in an email, and you can open it and put it in your presentation or your paper, correct? You could also use a scanner. So, so if you use a scanner, you would scan the picture, and then it would be saved as like a JPEG image on your computer. Then you could insert it into your paper or your presentation. So those are just a couple of ways that you can get the image into your uh, program, or the two easiest ways. So that's the work for this assignment. And again, this assignment is worth 100 points, and I expect it to be done well with sections of information, these six questions answered uh, completely, and the sketches in here. So do the work great the first time so you'll earn all 100 points, and then you won't have to redo it, right? So that's the work to be done for this assignment, so I'm going to go back to the the, um, the course and here we are week three and when you work on that assignment when you save it you save it as week three your first design that way you'll know exactly what that assignment is if you ever have to find it on your computer again so thanks for listening I hope this will help you out uh, being successful in this assignment bye